and a walk around the engine. Water and oil pressure and something else. Looks like this is where the engine speed indicator was that somebody's uh, won. And the little lever effect, whatever. And priming pump. See part of the gear train. This is the air follower. That's the air start one at the back. The exhaust and the fuel one. You can prime it by putting a bar in. I presume if you lift it onto top of the lobe, you can pull this little lever down, and then closing the various valves off, you can change the fuel pump if required. Cabin shaft bearings rely on whip supply to feed them. Rather strange fuel control rod, some of it's solid and others can actually move. Because it's a lever on the back of the pump, it's a bit hard to see. It must it has to work in an arc. Push rods don't appear to turn because they're actually got pins in the top. The, the air valve appears to be a shrouded variety as it is this guide, so it can't turn unlike the exhaust that is free to uh, rotate. It also lifts the valve back up as well, not just a, a press me down job. A bolt head. So you can uh, prime the fuel system easy, a little tundra chauffeur, relief valve and re return pipe. This is the air, the air start pipe. And that's a supply to the air start valve on the camshaft and that's the signal pipe to the air start valve in the cylinder head. The injector appears to be cooled as is that's a spill pipe over here but there's the inlet pipe and there's these two pipes that run to these two manifolds here. So it looks like it's uh, cooled injectors. There's a better view of the, uh, the guide for the air valve. So they carry a missing, but that ain't going to make much difference. Should look very impressive with all those going up and down. Well, pump seems a bit strange. It appears to have two separate sections, two separate parts to it. I suspect this is a fuel lift pump. I work for the uh, lube oil suction and a drain valve. So they all comes out of the pump here, up to here, to this rather rudimentary filter, and into the oil cooler that runs a full length of the engine. Well, then appears to come out there, as we've not been inside it yet. I'd imagine there must be a gallery that feeds the mains and large ends. Indicator Cox, little jumper pipe for the water to the cylinder head, and it's got through bolts. Water cooled exhaust manifold. And 
this appears to be uh, adjusting the engine speed. With the old catch a top on. This is the underbase that it was sat on in the original photographs. Here's the alternator. Three twenty six hundred RPM. 50 hertz. The exciter built onto it. Slip rings, etc. etc. More slip rings. A rather interesting looking air start bottle. A rather substantial header on it. flywheel complete with some German firewood and barring holes are on the other side fortunately on the side of the alternator and the barring stand <laughs> 